Hello and a warm welcome to your weekly dose of the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Natasha Jacobs. Now, if the terms quid pro quo, jurisprudence and inter vivos ring a bell, our guest today is sure to tickle your legal fancy. As the man behind bespoke law firm Whipping the Cat, CEO and founder Graham Wilson has a passion for all things law related. And with his firm recently being shortlisted for the Innovation Award at the 2013 African Legal Awards. Graham, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Natasha. Now, before we even get into the content, I have to ask whipping the cat. Why not just Wilson and Associates? Uh, good question, Natasha. Wilson and Associates, I think, would sound very much like a law firm. Mm -hmm. um, and we set out with the objective not to be like a law firm. So. Uh, creative minds, far more creative than what I am, came up with the name Whipping the Cat. We used a creative agency called 34 um, and gave them the idea about bespoke legal services, what we wanted to do, be innovative, be a little bit different, and um, perhaps be a bit quirky. Um, and the whole idea is bespoke legal services. So bespoke legal services came up with the idea of bespoke. What are we looking at? There was a, a synergy with tailoring, um, a little bit of research and homework, and came up with the idea that in the 18th century in, in the UK, mm -hmm. tailoring tailors would leave Savile Row, go off and do their own thing, providing people with a, a service at their home in their village, coming up with smart, nice suits, nice clothing for a fraction of the price and much more convenient. Um, and that just hit the nail on the head in terms of what we are trying to do at Whipping the Cat. And uh, with uh, a little bit of, of nervousness, we chose mm -hmm. the name um, and uh, yeah, we love it and it seems that a lot of people out there do too. So it's moving away from the typical stereotype. Now, another part of that stereotype around the legal profession is, you know, client X goes to firm B for quite a few sessions, maybe an appearance in court and every hour racks up those fees. You've taken quite a different perspective to this. Yeah, Natasha, a lot of the research that we did, um, and, and even myself historically as a buyer of legal services, one of the things that I really um, battled with, and a lot of things that I, I, I know our clients and certainly the public out there battle with, is the concept of, of an hourly rate and billing. And firstly, lawyers are seen as being expensive, but secondly, that, that the price just seems to be open-ended. You go there and you don't know how many hours it's going to take, um, and it leaves people open to guessing what their legal budget is going to be from a matter by matter base or even on an annual basis. So we took that and said, let's take that uncertainty out of it. Let's move completely away from hourly based billing mm -hmm. and let's go to a fixed rate. So any client that comes into our business will know what they're going to pay for any given service before we even start doing the work, just to remove that uncertainty. Because historically, you know, legal services are regarded as quite expensive, but the South African legal system is under scrutiny at the moment. What's going on? Why? Why? Are, you know, I, I jokingly said beforehand, sometimes, you know, lawyers are likened to secondhand car salesmen. So what's going on there right there? Yeah, I, I think, you know, p there, there as many jokes about lawyers as, as there are about uh, second-hand car salesmen or perhaps sometimes uh, even less honorable professions and, and uh, analogies to sharks and, and the like. So the legal profession historically doesn't have the best of names um, and the reason for that I'm not entirely sure. From my perspective, I, I think the legal profession has evolved very little over time. Um, and I think the opportunity is now for there to be a uh, evolution within the, in the legal service industry. It's happening elsewhere in the world. Um, and I think it's starting to happen in South Africa. Um, there's the, the Legal Practice Bill, which is being debated mm -hmm. in Parliament at the moment. Um, I, I'm not sure that that goes actually far enough in terms of innovation and creativity and, and regulating the industry properly. Um, but I think there, there is time for change and that time for change is now. Part of that evolution and change is the implementation and the use of technology. And in the global context, in the local uh, context, you know, there's an app for everything, there's a program for anything, you know, where's the legal system moving in terms of technology and how are you utilizing the platform? Yeah, I, th I think the legal system in South Africa and um, perhaps in Africa is, is moving quite slowly in that regard. So uh, I, you know, mentioned that the legal service or the legal industry has evolved very little over time. Law firm looks much like it did 100 years ago, mm -hmm. perhaps more. Um, so I don't think lawyers have been at the forefront of embracing technology, um, but there is technology that is available now. So at Whippy and the Cat, um, we've done a couple of things. We, the, the software, the back-end software that we run is, is based on a virtual law firm um, technology. So it puts all our consultants in touch with each other wherever they're based. Um, it puts our clients directly in touch with us wherever we're based. So our clients, for example, can have access to their documents via our web portal. It's safe, it's secure. They can access documents. It doesn't actually have to be emailed, um, which is in fact even more secure than, yeah. the, the, than emailing documents around. So there, there is technology around and about. 
Um, and one of the things that, that we need to do as, as Whipping the Cat is to make sure that we continually innovate and evolve um, and not actually just say, well, we've launched something new and innovative and that's it. You know, we, we need to be as, as innovative as our clients are. But how driven are you by the needs of your clients and consumer? If you look at the, you know, the consumer today, everything is online, everything is very social. I think 16-year-olds can't hold conversations anymore because they're constantly on you know, those, those chat sites. You use the word virtual and you're saying the, in, you know, the industry is changing very slowly. But is that perhaps the future of courtrooms around the globe, that they might just become virtual? Well, they already moves a foot in, in the U.S. Um, a lot of documents are being filed in court electronically. Um, there's stuff called e-discovery. So South Africa, slow adopter, but we get there. Um, so I think those kind of changes will, will come. Um, certainly in terms of, of web access, um, typically law firms haven't been great at that. Uh, the, a law firm website is typically just a shop window, mm -hmm. um, where ours goes beyond that. Ours is actually the shop itself. Um, you can go onto the website, you can download documents, you can upload documents and complete them, fill in templates, print them, email them directly to your customers. Um, so it just enables people to have access to these documents. And also, you're not then restricted to business hours. Mm -hmm. So you know, a lot of our clients are entrepreneurial themselves, um, and they can be drafting, filling in a, uh, an employment contract template while they're sitting at the airport. Um, they can be doing it on their iPhone, on, on, on a tablet. Um, the website is geared for, for that kind of technology. Let's talk a bit about your clients. You are a commercial law firm. You s focus on drafting business-related contracts, dealing with employment matters and the like. Now, a lot of big companies you know, have these legal firms that they have on retainer that deal with their issues, but we also have a very strong SMME and entrepreneurial sector in South Africa. You know, how a big a part does that play in your business? It's a very big part. So our, our our business is really, it has a tiered structure. So we aim to, to offer services to small companies, medium-sized companies, and top end. And for each of those, the services change uh, and, are, and are slightly different. And the rates, of course. And Well, the rates are agreed <laughs> upfront. Oh, so, right. we're not, so we're not charging bigger customers yeah. more than what we're char charging small customers. It's an agreed rate. Okay. Um, and and the, the rate has to be value. So the, our clients, whether they're big or small, need to see the value in what, in what we are doing. Um, and, and in terms of that, that uh, you know, the SME focus, uh, there's a lot of value that we believe we can add by being proactive, um, helping. There's a gap in the market as, as far as we see it, that a lot of people don't use legal services because they perceive them as being expensive um, and perhaps clouded in mystique, mm -hmm. um, not accessible, not attainable. So we're trying to break down that barrier and say, guys, you can use lawyers and it won't be painful and it needn't be expensive um, and you will know what it's going to cost you. So come in and get that guidance and advice that you need upfront mm -hmm. to, as a risk prevention me measure rather than waiting for something to go wrong and ending up perhaps in court. Graham, let's talk a bit about you. Where does your passion for the legal system have you? Did you always envision yourself as a little boy that you'll be a lawyer one day? I, I, I think I did. Um, and I think that was reinforced at school. I tended, uh, tended to be quite... I'm vocal and perhaps quite argumentative, mm -hmm. and I was told by teachers and parents and alike, you perhaps on you're the going team? to be a lawyer. Were you on the debate team I, as well? I, I was. <laughs> um, so it, it just reinforced, and it, it's something I've always been passionate about um, and, and followed you know, the typical path of undergraduate degree, law degree, um, and some, some you know, additional courses and qualifications, but all based on law. Um, and, and then thereafter, I worked as an in-house lawyer mm -hmm. um, for about 15 years at a couple of the big corporates within South Africa. Um, so there I was a buyer of legal services. So I was providing legal services in-house within, within mm -hmm. the business, but I was also dealing with lawyers. So uh, I got a good sense of what it was like from a business perspective, and I got a good sense of what it was like actually being a, a purchaser of legal services. Um, and and I, I spent a little bit of time at a, at a big consulting firm, um, and that just really planted the seed for me that there's an opportunity to do things differently, to do things smarter, um, and, and got me into the entrepreneurial space where a couple of years ago I started a company called Legal and Commercial Solutions, and Whipping the Cat, I think, is just, a, just the evolution of that. How tough was it to set up shop on your own? It is tough. Um, I, I think you know a, a number of factors need to need to come into place. I think one needs to be in the right personal space. Um, one needs to have the right support structures. There's always a question of access to capital mm -hmm. and funding. How you're going to go about it. Um, so it, it is tough, um, but but it's also enormously exciting. So it's it's you know white knuckle time, um, late nights, not much sleep, um, lots of coffee. But there's lots of excitement and buzz, and and I love that. Um, and you know, I, I really, really thrive on it. So it's something that I, I love doing, and, and keep pushing boundaries, keep doing things differently is something that just works for me. Share a day in the life of uh, Graham Wilson. 
day in the life of Graham Wilson is get up, um, get the kids out of bed, um, rustle them up and get them ready for school, sometimes do uh, a school drop-off, sometimes my, my wife would take care of that, and then it's into the office. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's Is a it a nine-to-five day? It's not a nine-to-five day. It's not, um, and it's it's kind of all over the show. Mm -hmm. So typically, it will it will be a balance of doing some legal work. It will do a balance uh, a bit of client re relationship work, um, a little bit of, of research homework, um, and then you know back to home, spend some time with the kids. But then typically in the evening, it's back to the computer or the, or the iPad, um, perhaps watching a bit of TV with the iPad on the lap, um, and yeah, getting a bit of stuff done. So you know, the day it's very it's very fluid. There isn't a begin to the beginning to the working day and an end to the working day. Work, home, social, play, they're all kind of just just mixed into into one like happy mix. What's the key to running a successful business? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> How have you made it to this point? Um, I think perseverance. I think um, following your passion, following your instinct, your gut, um, doing research. So not, you know, it's a combination of taking a chance, but maybe having a safety net. So understanding, doing a bit of homework, research, speaking to smart people. And then from our perspective, what, what we did was we spoke to clients and potential clients and, and just understood what it was that they wanted. Mm -hmm. So in starting Whipping the Cat, we, we really adopted a, a blank piece of paper approach and said, what is it that clients want and how can we deliver that for them? So we try to get that alignment between what people actually are looking for and what we can hopefully deliver. The future of Whipping Cat, where is that? And, and from an innovation perspective, what are you hoping to offer you know, the industry out there? Yeah, I, I think Whipping the Cat is, is really its early days. Uh, I, I, I foresee Whipping the Cat offering um, algorithms online so people can go in, answer questions, which would actually give you outcome legal answers. Um, I could give you examples, but you know, there, there's stuff that, that's out there that will help you analyze whether you should sue someone or not. Just go through the process of answering questions, um, whether someone is an independent contractor or an employee. Answer the questions and you'll, you'll, get, a, you'll get an answer. Um, so there's lots of lots of smart technology out there, um, and the, my aim is for whipping the cat to be at the forefront of that, certainly within the, in, within the African continent. And making it easy, easy and accessible for all. It has to be. Graham, thank you very much. Good, thank you, Natasha. Well, that's a wrap for this week's edition of The Entrepreneurial Edge. Next up, we travel to the States for the live US closing bell. Be sure to join us at the same time next week. Until then, it's goodbye and thank you for joining us.